Well, hey guys, who's excited for 2018? <laughs> Did any of you all have any uh, fun New Year's plans or resolutions, things that you want to uh, accomplish in the new year? I'm sure everybody is uh, goal setting and what have you. But as promised, today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my skincare favorites from 2017. As you all know, I tried out many, many things over the past year, um, reviewed many things on the channel, learned a lot about Korean skincare, Japanese skincare products, recently some more in the realm of products from Europe um, that I've been loving, but kind of things that I have used, used up, and even repurchased throughout 2017 that are are, are going to be mainstays, mainstays in my um, skincare lineups and that I really love and really uh, believe work and are useful, I will share with you guys today because um, I know you all are interested. First up, I will just uh, get into, uh, let's just cleanse first. Um, I'll kind of try and categorize these things um, in some sort of um, logical manner. Okay. This year I discovered oil and balm based uh, double cleanse uh, approach to removing my mascara and sunscreen from my face and have been loving it. I tried many cleansing oils, many cleansing balms. There are a lot of fantastic ones out there. Far and away, my absolute favorite and the one that I will continue to repurchase and use is the Hadalabo cleansing oil. This is fantastic. It has just the right amount of emulsifier. Um, as far as an oil based cleanser. I really love this one. It's gentle, fragrance free, no nonsense, affordable. I purchased mine on Amazon and had no problem um, getting it uh, from Japan that way and um, feel comfortable that I have the authentic product um, and have never had a problem purchasing uh, skincare products on Amazon. And I really love the way this takes my um, mascara and sunscreen off when coupled, especially with the Hadalabo Cleansing Foam. This is my third bottle of it. I haven't opened it yet. This, um, for me this year, has been one of my favorite, um, this has been a, a favorite foaming cleanser for me. Um, I uh, hear you guys in that foaming cleansers tend to be drying. This Hadalabo Hyaluronic Acid Foaming Cleanser, however, is not drying at all in my experience. I really love it. It's fragrance free, affordable, um, and comes in this cute little pump. And I swear this little bottle lasts so long. This little bottle lasts about four or five months of nightly use. Okay. So it really lasts a long time. It's worth the wait from Japan. You can also get this, um, a little bit quicker and very reliably sourced from Beauty Sash, okay? They are the gals, guys and gals in Hawaii who sponsored my um, October giveaway for you guys. So you can get it from them a lot quicker than Amazon, but either seem to work well. So I've really been loving those as kind of the double cleanse approach. Another um, face wash, however, that I learned about this year and had never tried before and really love, I've used many of these small samples of and need to commit to a big bottle of it, I just have so many facial cleansers I haven't purchased one, is the La Roche-Posay Tellurian Purifying Foaming Cleanser. Again, ignore the word foam on this. This is not drying whatsoever. It has ceramides in it. As far as um, in the US, La Roche-Posay can be a pretty expensive line. However, I find that this face wash is pretty affordable and very gentle, fragrance free. If you have sensitive skin, dry skin, if you are going through tretinoin and you're peeling a lot and you just need a basic cleanser that is very gentle, this is a fantastic one. I uh, never would have tried it uh, other than the fact that the sample was given, me, given to me to review and I really love it and would repurchase this. It was a favorite. Um, it was a favorite in my travel bag. Really, really awesome. Also blends well with the cleansing oil and all of the cleansing balms that I tried out this year. Really a great one I um, recommend. Now you guys know that every morning you see me wash my face with a 2% salicylic acid or BHA face wash, targeting um, areas on the chin, the nose, the forehead, sparing around my eyes, around my mouth, around my nose, because those are areas that are prone to irritation from the salicylic acid. I use these face washes, salicylic acid face washes in the morning, not to cleanse, not because you necessarily need to wash anything off in the morning. 
I use them solely for the active ingredient, the salicylic acid, because as I've said in all of my videos, salicylic acid in a face wash form can very, very quickly penetrate into the oil bearing surfaces of the skin, can do its thing, can function mechanistically um, to help peel, lightly exfoliate the skin in a wash form. It does not need prolonged contact time to be efficacious, particularly if you use it on a, on a daily or every other day type basis, as I do. Previously, in other years, I always, always, always used the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash, either the orange one or the pink one, whichever one was on sale. That one I, I tolerated well, I really, really loved. I have since changed my tune and I have you guys to thank. One of one of you guys, one of a viewer um, who watches and comments on um, the majority of my videos, thank you very much, um, clued me into the fact that Zapzit, a brand that I have used uh, in the past as far as their benzoyl peroxide leave-on product, Zapzit it has a 2% uh, BHA face wash that um, is fragrance free, okay, which is great. Cruelty free, by the way, Zapzit is a cruelty free brand. No annoying ingredients, okay? So what sets this apart from the Neutrogena one is that it doesn't have fragrance. Fantastic, okay? So if you're sensitive to fragrance, this one is phenomenal. I have been using this and I am obsessed. I will never I mean, I say this tongue in cheek. I will not be going back to the new to the Neutrogena two percent uh, salicylic acid oil free acne wash ever again. Now that I have this in my life, um, if you have been excessively dried out and or irritated by salicylic acid face washes in the past, you you, you feel burned by them, so to speak. Give Zapzit a try. I was, I'm so blown away by how, how moisturizing this is, how, um, how nice it is. It's very inexpensive. You can get it at Target. You can buy it online, okay? Um, I'm not, I don't believe it's available in Europe. I apologize. But you can get it here in the U.S. It is uh, distributed by a pharmaceutical, Waltman Pharmaceuticals in Jackson, Mississippi. So um, that sounds fantastic. Um, yeah, made in the USA. It uh, has a little bit of aloe, so it's soothing. Um, I really love this. I recommend this over the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash. I recommend this over CeraVe's SA Face Wash. And SA, that sounds like, that sounds like, you know, um, street slang for, hey, what's up or something. Um, I recommend it over the um, CeraVe um, SA Face Wash that many of you um, have tried in the past. That one's great. Um, I just think this one is better. It's a lot more soothing, no nonsense. Um, and that sort of thing. A word of, wa of warning though, as I always say, don't use this around your eyes, okay? That's where people go wrong, first of all. They use it around their eyes, they use it, and then they don't follow it up with a moisturizer. So those are tips when using this, follow it up with a moisturizer. If it's daytime, follow it up with a moisturizer that contains a sunscreen in it, okay? But this is great. This is great for, not only for acne, it's, it's, it's got a long track record in acne control. It also has a long track record and is efficacious for for lightly and gently exfoliating the skin. And if you are somebody whose skin um, and acne and what, what have you heals with a dark spot um, and you're bothered by post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, this is a good one, okay? Because salicylic acid does not tend to exacerbate those problems and can inhibit some of the biology that drives those problems and be efficacious. So I recommend this one. It is a favorite. Thank you so much to the viewers who clued me into this. Um, all right, moving right along. So that's kind of things that I've been loving to clean my face this year. But um, I do wash my hands a lot, okay? And I am now a huge fan. I discovered this on iHerb. This is the Attitude Natural Foaming Hand Wash, um, fragrance-free with colloidal oatmeal. Do you see this? I keep this in my bathroom. Um, I'm just holding it up here. I'll list it down below. This is cruelty-free and vegan, comes from Canada, so um, you guys in Canada can get this, um, comes from Montreal. 
no fragrance whatsoever um very moisturizing i i keep this in my bathroom and this winter i have not found my hands to be excessively dried out by by this whatsoever it is very moisturizing it's great because you don't want fragrance on your hands and irritating soap ingredient residue on your hands when a you're taking out contact lenses as i do or b you know you're putting on skincare with your hands okay if there's fragrance on your hands from washing your hands with a fragrancy kind of soap then you know that can cause irritation but this this is a great one if you've got sensitive dry skin um, fragrance free this is a bathroom staple as of now and I will continue repurchasing this thank you iHerb all right so those are things that I wash up with all right moving right along to things that I moisturize with and have been loving this year this this bad boy is empty the earth science multi therapy ceramide healthy skin lotion I got this on iHerb this is a win it's fragrance free it's um, shea butter based a light a lotion great for reapplying throughout the day great directly on wet skin out of the shower very moisturizing affordable it is cruelty free vegan this is made in the USA um, in Santa Barbara, California. I recommend it. It has um, ceramides in it as well, so it can help restore the uh, skin barrier, particularly in those who suffer from eczema and dry, inflamed patches on the body. So I really love this and um, would repurchase it for sure. Another body moisturizer that I discovered this year, particularly in the summer, that I was like, hey, is Aveeno's Eczema Therapy Balms. They've got a baby one and an adult one. And the only difference in, in my mind and in, in reading the ingredients is, is the label. The baby one has these cute moon and stars and the other one does not, okay? But this is fantastic. It is not greasy. Um, you know, I think kids love it because kids don't like to have sticky stuff on their skin at all. I mean, really nobody does, but somehow as adults, we, we tend to... Uh, to tough it out more, I don't know, punish ourselves. We get more into punishing ourselves than we ever were as children. It's not really a good thing, but anyways, um, this is fantastic. It's great in the summertime um, to reapply um, because you know one dilemma with lotions and things um, that when you put them on your on your legs and you're wearing shorts and you go out, stuff sticks. This does not do that. Okay, it's very moisturizing. It has ceramides in it. I believe it's uh, colloidal oatmeal based. Fantastic, great for um, the, the body for sure. I haven't tried this on my face, but I imagine it would be phenomenal there as well. I will continue to repurchase this time and time again. Speaking of face and facial moisturizers, a facial moisturizer that I discovered, again, thanks to the fantastic commenters here and viewers of my channel. Um, I don't, I apologize, I don't actually have the empty bottle. It is the um, Sun Young 2X Barrier Cream by Etude House. I got mine on Amazon and I really loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I would definitely repurchase as far as its formulation and ingredients consistency. Exactly, Neutrogena's Oil Free Moisturizer, which is a fantastic one and one I have used. And um, what else can I say about it? If you're somebody terrified by, um, you know, clogging pores, this one, you know, you can, you can rest easy. Uh, it's very, you know, gentle, it shouldn't exacerbate acne. It's good for sensitive skin. There's no fragrance in it. Um, I really like that one a lot. Other facial moisturizers that I've also loved, I don't think I ever used CeraVe PM prior to this year, but I've been using it and loving it. Um, it, this contains niacinamide in it. I use this every night on my face. I think this has a brightening effect. Honestly, the niacinamide in here, if you can tolerate it, I think really it shines through as far as a brighten, skin brightening. And it has ceramides in it to help restore the skin barrier. And it is uh, very moisturizing. I love it. Not gonna break you out, not pore clogging or any of that kind of kind of fear. Good for sensitive skin aside from the niacinamide. If you have sensitive skin and you're not, you don't find niacinamide overly stingy, then that's great. You know, CeraVe was bought out by L'Oreal, so I don't know what 2018 is gonna be, bring for CeraVe. Um, I'm a little apprehensive. Hopefully they don't go changing things up too much, particularly with regards to the CeraVe in the tub. CeraVe in the tub, by the way, does not have niacinamide in it, if you're um, not aware, and it can be used on the face, will not clog pores on the face, very moisturizing on the face, and that is how my mother uses it, because she can't be bothered with two cream. She just likes having one tub for the entire 
surface area and I think that is a lot more practical but speaking of another facial moisturizer brought to my attention by a few viewer that I have recently started using and loving is uh, I've been keeping this actually in my travel bag is the simply pure hydrating serum sensitive skin okay this is cer has ceramides in it very very affordable to you guys in Europe you can get it this at Superdrug and um, uh, boots, I think. I'm not entirely sure because um, I <laughs> haven't been to Europe in a in a hot minute. But uh, this, I understand, is readily available to you. I highly recommend this. I love it. Um, and it is cruelty free and vegan as well. Um, this is a great nighttime moisturizer. Um, I'd love to try some more of their products. They also have a um, Another one that comes in a green container that has a little bit of lactic acid in it and is also very good. And then also in terms of moisturizing my face, this year I discovered, um, you know, I got into humectants more. Previously I was using Neutrogena Hydro Boost uh, Gel Cream for, sense, for extra dry skin, okay? That is the key thing to remember for extra dry skin. That one I say is, is the key one because it's the one that's fragrance free and least likely to be irritating. I just use a tiny amount of these gel, um, hyalur these hyaluronic acid gel uh, based humectants um, under my moisturizer, just a tiny little like half a pea. And the one that I've been using and loving and has replaced Neutrogena Hydro Boost for me, although I would go back to it if I couldn't get this in a pinch because it's great, is the Hotalabo Super Plumping Gel Gel Cream. I love this. This is like my second or third container of it. I've gotten it on, on Amazon from Japan. I've gotten it from Target. Um, you know, you can get it in the States now. It is fantastic. Do you know this has methyl chloroisothiazinolone in it or MCI? So if you are allergic to that, then you want to go with the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Extra Dry Sensitive Extra Dry Skin Formulation because that does not have MCI in it. But I'm not bothered by MCI. It's safe. It's fine. It's a preservative. You need preservatives and watery things like this to keep pseudomonas from growing in them. Okay. Um, and yes, jar packaging is fine. Um, you know that's nothing to fret about. So this is a fantastic one that I love. All right, so moving along. Now, um, I mentioned in my um, what dermatologists are recommending video, there were some um, products that were recommended in that for dark spots, melasma, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation type concerns, brightening creams, okay? Um, and uh, brightening creams tend to be expensive. I'm just gonna be honest, you know, Personally, I happen to notice that using CeraVe PM, the niacinamide in that, I really believe has a, a brightening effect. But this year, um, in the realm of Korean skincare, I discovered something that um, I was always kind of apprehensive to talk too much about because A, it's expensive, and B, it has a lot of fragrance in it. But I have to say, I really see a little bit of, I, I really see benefit when I use this, is the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Liquid, okay? I've tried a lot of Jart stuff, and um, we have sort of a tumultuous relationship, me and Jart. He's gonna put all this fragrance and everything. If Jart would just exclude fragrance, we could be like, we could be BFFs, but we're frenemies, okay? This product has licorice root extract in it, and it, licorice root extract I've talked about, or glycerizate, <laughs> can inhibit some of the biology of pigment cell production. It's in a lot of those creams that other dermatologists were recommending that I talked about in that video, and it certainly does have a brightening effect. This definitely does. This product definitely will brighten you, okay? Um, and it's not irritating, it's not pore clogging. It's kind of a watery humectant. It's not like super moisturizing. It kind of just kind of goes on like water, okay? So I put it, I put it on at nighttime sometimes under my moisturizer. It, it even smells good. It smells like some like baby powder or something. I mean, that, that's a fragrance allergy waiting to happen, Dr. Jar, but it definitely is brightening. So I, I love this. I will continue to use it sneaky, sneaky here and there, um, but it does have some problematic ingredients in it. I review a lot of sheet masks and non-sheet masks, you know, mud masks, etc. for you guys. Overall, they are kind of, you know, something fun to do. Definitely not essential, 
But in my brain, the reason why I'm always so interested in sheet masks is because they follow this principle of what's called wet wrap therapy, okay? Wherein you take wet skin you um, and a moisturizer, you apply essentially a moisturizer to wet skin and occlude it under a fabric to kind of seal everything in. Um, this is a mainstay, actually, of therapy for eczema oftentimes. When eczema gets really bad on the body, oftentimes individuals are told to pursue wet wrap therapy, wherein upon getting out of a short shower, they grease themselves up with a fragrance-free moisturizer such as Vanny Cream or CeraVe, for example, and any um, you know prescribed medicaments as indicated, apply topically, and then they wrap um, first in a wet uh, layer of, of either gauze or cotton uh, pajamas and then they wrap in a dry layer okay and so this year I've tried so many um, uh, sheet masks seeking one that made sense as far as this this kind of therapeutic approach for skin barrier repair and the one that I can recommend strongly and love are the Hotolabo sheet masks. These are the only ones that I confidently ever find that I ever find to be fragrance free and just just a sheet and some humectant and moisturizer and nothing else, okay? So Sensitive skin type should be fine with this. Um, rosacea skin type should be fine with this. I can never predict that 100%, but this is not something that's gonna be irritating or break out people's skin or be problematic. All it is is a little gentle, fragrance-free, liquidy moisturizer under a wet sheet, okay? You can develop an allergy to anything, but this is a low-risk mask as far as sheet masks go. It's very no-nonsense, and I think it's fantastic. I love keeping these in the fridge and putting them on cold. Um, I don't know, that just, in my brain, I feel like I'm doing a little extra something, but um, whatever. Um, okay, so after we've moisturized and we talked about dark spots, melasma, um, you know, nothing as far as brightening is worth being pursued. Nothing really in the skin is worth being pursued without, as I always say, sun protection on board. So let's uh, round out some of the stuff with sun sunscreens that are new to me this year that I have been loving and sun protection. And I think what's been most new to me is in the realm of chemical sunscreens that um, aren't irritating. And those come from Japan, okay? Um, that's what I've been trying out and loving and will re continue to repurchase. And two of my favorites this year have been, um, they tie, okay? I, I find just as far as how they feel going on and, and that sort of thing, they're, sim they're very similar, is the Biore UV Watery Essence and the Nivea Protect Water Gel. I love this packaging of the Nivea um, Protect Water Gel in the pump with this cap that you can take off. I think that is such logical packaging for sunscreen um, rather than, you know, dumping it on your hand and that kind of thing. It's just, it just makes more sense. And this one, the Biore UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence is also fantastic. You'll see this, this is one of my refills. It says 2014. I don't, I believe that is um, the year it got awarded as like, like awesome sunscreen by this best cosmetics award thing. It's not the year it was this particular bottle was made. I got this on Amazon. You um, also, I believe can get this um, from Beauty Sesh as well. Um, but yeah, I really love those as far as chemical sunscreens from Japan. They have some filters in them that are a little bit more photo stable than the ones we have here in the U.S. And they are not as irritating and the formulations are great as far as the watery gel kind of things. If you're somebody who finds that sunscreens are like really too greasy, make you too oily, shiny, um, bother your skin, these I think are worth a try, okay? You definitely need to reapply them every two hours when outdoors periodically throughout the day, but I've really been loving them. I think if you, regardless of your skin color, I think you will find these go on very, very, very well. There's zero cast with this, okay? It can be a phenomenal sunscreen as far as sun protection, but if it leaves you looking like, you know, like a, a mime, you know, you're not going to want to wear it out all the time. So this one um, I have really loved. The Elta MD UV Sport Broad, broad Spectrum SPF 50 um, with transparent zinc oxide. This is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc oxide as well as octinoxate and octisalate. Um, so it, uh, you know, as far as mineral, things with mineral sunscreen ingredients, 
This blends in really well. Um, there's no white cast. It's very moisturizing, will not clog pores, not greasy, um, you know, water resistant. So great. Um, I, I was, I've been able to reapply this over um, tinted sunscreens when I was using them in the past um, with no problem. I really love this. It is on the pricier side, but for me, you know, this bottle, using it throughout the year lasted you know, probably nine or 10 months, lasts a really long time. So I found it was worth worth the price point, honestly. It's not that expensive. They have some more expensive sunscreens for sure. They have a lot more expensive products for sure. In terms of their sunscreens, this is one of the most affordable ones they have. I think it's great and I will definitely repurchase this one. So and the other sunscreen type product that I tried out this year and strongly, strongly recommend is the Vanny Cream Lip Protect Sunscreen SPF 30. This is a mineral sunscreen that is fragrance free and um, offers very good lip protection as far as a lip product. You all won't like it when you try it because of the aesthetics of it, all right? It basically does, it leaves a white, a white cast behind and it's a little goopy, but the white does blend in well. This is something that if you go to the pool when it's summer, you know, you're out for a long time, this you need, okay? I, like, just kind of embrace having a little white, filmy, goopy stuff. It's better than, you know, a honking lip skin cancer 10 or 15 years down the road. All right, the final product, um, because today, as this video is going live, it marks the one year anniversary of me starting Differin Gel, okay? Um, this is just an empty one of it. I have, you know, a full size tube in my bathroom. But for me, this has made all of the difference in my skincare routine. I use a pea-sized amount of this to my face every night, Monday through Friday. I take a break on the weekend. So yeah, I mean, and if you found my channel by uh, virtue of searching different or different tips or whatever, uh, then comment below and introduce yourself. Um, thanks Thanks, Differin, for, for making me so many BFFs down in the comments and in my channel. The reason that I made the Differin Tips videos, people are always asking why I did that and not Tretinoin. I did it because this is uh, the first uh, retinoid in the U.S. to be available over the counter without a prescription. And so I thought it would be most helpful for people to find videos on how to use it. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, I get a lot of questions. Will I be using Tretinoin? Do I have any intention of using Tretinoin on myself? Um, yes, I do. Um, however, I don't think I'm going to share it um, to the level of detail that I did with Differin. And the reason being is that Tretinoin is, you know, not only FDA approved for several other indications, but it's also prescribed for many, many, many things that are off-label. It is not available over the counter. And so it's, you know, I, um, I struggle to make a video on how I use it and then it be a misconstrued as a general recommendation as to how everyone should use it. So I don't think those are really great videos for me to be making because they can be highly misleading and confusing. Um, I will continue to talk about tretinoin at length this year. I made, you know, a whole series of tretinoin knowing videos in the Q and A's you guys seem to be enjoying. But personally, I will not be sharing how I use Tretinoin with you guys so as to not, um, you know, create content that is misleading um, and to say, like, this is how it generally should be used. Okay, I can, you know, I will continue to share tips as far as how to moisturize, good moisturizers to use along with Tretinoin, etc., etc. Don't worry there. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the favorites. Comment below on if you use any of these or what your skincare favorite has been this year. Um, I hope... It if you're new to the channel or a longtime viewer, thank you so much for all of your support. Um, stay tuned for 2018, more content from me to come, both in the realm of skincare Q&As on Fridays, as well as, uh, you know, skincare product reviews, um, skincare ingredient discussions, you guys seem to love those, uh, drugstore walkthroughs. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't get thrown in jail and um, vlogs uh, you guys love vlogs and vlogging is is my thing it's what I started my channel to do um, and what I enjoy sharing with you all the most um, so they all will continue so um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye